It's April 20th, 420, and some of you probably are watching this at 420 a.m. For some of you, that may mean something, but there are a lot of you probably saying, so what? And the truth be told, most of us around here didn't know what 420 signified until we saw it this week on a primetime show on another network, and it wasn't even an Aaron Sorkin show. And if you know what 420 is, you're laughing right now. So we invited someone in to explain. He is Stephen Hager, the editor-in-chief of High Times Magazine. Good morning, Stephen. Hi. Morning. So on Boston Public, on this television show, there was this big controversy about the 420 Club and the kids being involved in 420. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know what the number 420 meant, but apparently it's got some significant with marijuana use, right? Yeah, it's it's been a code word for many years in inside the uh, counterculture. To, to, it's as a code for marijuana. Now, what is it? Where did it come from? It actually came from, in 1971. Uh, six uh, students at San Rafael High School invented it, and it just sort of spread through the Grateful Dead underground for many years. And then High Times discovered it, and once we started publicizing it, it really went global. So what's so special about the numbers 420? Well, they picked 420 because it was the time of day they were going to meet to go look for an abandoned pot patch that they found a treasure map to. But it soon just became, uh, it, it, you know, 420 has a lot of meetings now. It can mean anything from, do you want to go smoke some pot? Do you have any pot on you? You know, do you, is it 420 yet? Or, you know, you know, it's, but it's a way for this persecuted culture to talk to each other and not be exposed to people that, you know, like teachers or police or, you know, people like that now, people outside there, the culture. Is there any truth to the rumor that at 420 also meant there's marijuana smoking or drug use going no. on by the police? That was one that was, urban myth. That was a false rumor. Uh, people just tried to figure out where to come from. Why is it so popular? Well, I really think that what this shows is that uh, the counterculture, which was sort of a spiritual revolution that took place in the 60s, is really kind of like an infant baby spirituality that's birthing. And what you see here is the first real national holiday of this culture is emerging. And what's kind of interesting is that it's uh, it's around the same time as all these other big holidays like Passover and Easter and. Uh, and it's universally and globally adopted by millions of people now as a holiday. Now, people are probably sitting at home going, now, why are we having a holiday celebrating an illegal activity? Right. A holiday that parents fight to keep their kids away from doing this kind of thing. Right. And, and there are people and, who don't believe that this is a, a culture of any kind, that yeah. it's just an illegal I, and activity. I, I should say off the top, too, that the High Times doesn't promote the use of marijuana by children. We're very much against that. But, you know, the counterculture has a sacrament, and that sacrament is cannabis. And we believe that the laws against it are wrong. And these are very deep-seated beliefs. So it's, it's only natural that our first big holiday would involve cannabis. So what's going to happen on 420, and besides people getting stoned? What's going to happen? Well, I think that the most traditional and the biggest, one of the biggest celebrations will probably be on the top of Mount Tamalpais, which is the central peak of Marin County. That's the birthplace of 420, and that's where the tradition has been established for the longest. What I'd like to see happen, I'd like to see a moment of silence for peace in the drug war. I'd like to see a moment of silence for the victims of Waco and Columbine and Oklahoma City. And I know there's a lot of you know very tragic events that are happening right around the same time. And I, I think that we need to to study why these things are happening. Why is there so much violence in our culture? And really what the 60s counterculture represents is nonviolence and peace. And this is what we're trying to bring to the table. So you don't see 420 as part of the drug culture. You see it as part of a different kind of culture? I see it as part of an emerging spirituality that I call the counterculture. Now, why would something that is a counterculture, something like 420, you said at the beginning, mm -hmm. to keep the authorities out or parents right. or cops, why go public with it? There are going to be celebrations in different parts of the country and different sort of rallies. Well, now everybody knows about it. The people yeah, that. Uh, but you know, when the, the Christians were first persecuted in Rome, they developed a secret code, the symbol of a fish. And when, when they would meet and they didn't know if they were Christians or not, one would draw half the fish, the other would finish the fish. Well, we've been doing 420 for a long time now, since the 70s, and it's time to bring it out into the open. It's time to show the, 
the world that we're a legitimate minority group that suffers persecution through the use of our sacrament. Now, are you going through a political process to try to change what, how you feel about the way your, your group is persecuted? Well, I think that the, um, the initiatives that you see in California mm -hmm. and the other nine states that have passed medical marijuana laws, these are these initiatives have been pushed forward by the counterculture. It's our agenda, and we really went to protect the sick people first. You know, mm -hmm. we don't care about our own personal use as much as we care about people with serious illness. So that, you know, we spent the last 10 years trying to get sick people access to marijuana, and that's been very successful. It's always interesting that this is around Earth Day as well, and another issue, obviously, for people who are interested in cannabis is hemp. Right. And if you can explain to people why hemp and Earth Day would tie into each other. Well, the, the, the part that's used for medicine is the flower. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it, the stalk, is, can be used for about 40,000 different items. And everything that it used to be made out of is now made out of petrochemicals, which is petrochemicals are the major cause of pollution on the planet. Mm -hmm. So we'd really like to see farmers growing non-THC mm -hmm. industrial hemp as a commodity for to replace all these petrochemical products. All right, Stephen Hager of High Times Magazine, thanks for filling us in on 420 today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You're watching World News Now.